Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Football Fix. I am Richard from the Dipsy Dudes and Game Week 5 is here and there's going to be a lot of managers out there right now hoping they have the same bumper week that they just had in Game Week 4. I mean, it was an orgy of points. You had hat-tricks, braces, you had multiple assists, uh, clean sheets, penalty saves, bonus points all over the place. And I tell you what, there were points to be had everywhere. But before we look ahead and see where the points are going to be in game week 5, let's go back in time and check out the dream team for game week 4. Despite LVG ditching 3-5-2, it's still the preferred formation for the dream team with Chelsea's power couple, Costa and Fabregas once again featuring with 10 and a massive 17 points respectively. It's the second time that both men have been in a weekly dream team. Both men are in the overall dream team and they are the two highest point scoring players in the game today. I think we can all agree that right now bringing in C and F it's not just going to be a knee-jerk reaction, it's time to lump on, like over 50% of people have for Diego Costa so far. There was a strong point showing for the Manchester United midfield and oh how beautiful it was to see. Herrera and Di Maria both getting a goal and an assist and over at Arsenal, Wilshire getting the same. Still not convinced though that Wilshire's going to do that every week. If you want to guarantee from me what Jack Wilshire's going to get every week, I'd say a yellow card. Boom. Finally, Southampton showed again that despite their summer fire sale, they still have players worth having in your team. With goals from Pelé and Bertrand, who also got a clean sheet and an assist, as well as a bonus point as well. There's at least four Saints players at the moment who I would say are looking really good to be additions for your squad. There's the aforementioned Pelle and Bertrand, but also looking at the likes of Nathaniel Klein and Morgan Schneiderlin, who are both great options for your team going forward. Right, that was game week four. Let's now look ahead at who will be making the impact in game week five. These are your players for consideration. Bushi is out indefinitely, so who can you bring in for 5.5 million to replace him? Well, who says it's got to be 5.5 million for a start? Does there are some obvious candidates, of course. You're looking at the form players of Dyer and uh, Nathaniel Clyde, who we've mentioned earlier, and Ryan Solskjaer, as well as Bertrand as well who all come in actually slightly cheaper, so you can make some money out of that transfer. With Spurs taking on West Brom this week, Dyer does look a good shout. But if you are looking for someone a little bit cheaper from Spurs, who might be a little bit more of a uh, diamond in the rough, shall we say, maybe Danny Rose, five million, and he's gonna be bombing up those flanks, so maybe an assist, he's had one this season so far, maybe he'll get a second against West Brom. I do feel that this should be a good showing for Spurs this weekend. However, away from Spurs, if you're looking for a bargain player, much like how Nathan Dyer is the bargain player at the moment in the midfield, you go to Swansea and you find yourself Neil Taylor for Swansea. He's been in great form and he's 4.5 million and it'll free up a cool million for you to spend elsewhere. So have a look at him as a possible replacement for Debushi. However, if I was looking at games to bank on a clean sheet, as I said, it spurs West Brom, which also means sticking in the midfield with Chadley and Lamella. Chadley is on three goals in three games and averaging a bonus point each game as well and he's still 6.1 million so you can lump on him and again he's a very good option to keep in his squad for a little bit more risk there's lamella he's had a quiet time of it since he got those two assists against qpr uh, that was two weeks ago so you feel that this is a chance to impress at home against west brom he is 8 million though, 
that's where the risk is. He is slightly higher, but if you fancy rolling the dice, Lamella for the out there shout. If you haven't done so already, it is time to purge your Newcastle players. Attackers aren't doing anything, defenders aren't doing anything. Yes, I know if you look at players in form at the moment, Jan Mack will be on that list. But seriously, I am not relying on a defence that has conceded seven goals in the last, what, two games? Forget that, not having it. The big knee-jerk reaction at the moment is people clamouring for Costa, over 50%, Di Maria and Fabregas. To be honest, and this won't sound like a revelation at all, it's not really a stretch, but you can't really argue about not having any of those players in your team. They're all going to add value and they're all going to add points. However, with those players costing nearly, what? 30 million altogether, you need budget options elsewhere if you decide to go for all three. Last week we took a look at Alua at Leicester, who made it three goals in four games last week. I did say I fancied him to do it and he didn't let me down. Uh, can he make it four in five? They are up against Manchester United this week. Now, as good as Manchester United's attack seems to be at the moment, looking at QPR, which probably isn't the best uh, example to give, but it's all Man United have got this season, uh, the defence still looks shaky. I mean, QPR should have scored an open goal when De Gea came running out and there was a mix-up in the defence. And I think... Man United are probably going to win this game. I'm fancying Man United for the away win at the King Power Stadium. However, they ain't going to keep a clean sheet. Not today, and I fancy Alua to be the man to score against them. So I'd say, again, he's 5.5 million, and he's going to take advantage of that leaky, shaky-looking defence. After his banger of a strike against Hull, Enna Valencia is still only 6.9 million. Because he's coming back from injury, his price has dropped. If he's going to keep scoring goals like he did against Hull, his price ain't going to be dropping much longer. West Ham may be up against Liverpool, but after they looked so bang average against Aston Villa last week, without Sturridge and without Sterling, and how bang average they looked in Europe as well, I would say West Ham have got a chance of maybe roughing them up. If West Ham can get under Balotelli's skin and pretty much make him disinterested like he became against Aston Villa, he didn't fancy it, his head went and he became a non-entity in that second half. If they can do that to him, then that's going to give West Ham opportunities again. And I think that Enna Valencia can show again that he's got the class to score in the Premier League. So, for 6.9 million, he's another budget option for your attackers. Now I'm putting my neck out for this next one because I still fancy Ricardo Alaves to do something for Sunderland against Burnley this weekend. He does like a shot from distance. I think he had three shots from distance last week. So he fancies himself. He backs himself to score. And at some point, he is going to score. He's got 100% pass completion as well from last weekend on his debut. I think if Burnley keep being susceptible to the through balls that they have been and can't keep possession like they haven't been so far, then I think he can get off the mark. He can be yours again for six million, so another budget option for your attackers and someone else who isn't too selected who might be able to allow you to get the jump on people who are higher than you in the league. We talked about Abel Hernandez last week as a striker that has done it at international level and he proved that he could do it at Premier League level. So far anyway, he had a strong opening game grabbing a debut goal. He got seven points last week. He's seven million in value and he's up against Newcastle. So I would say fill your boost, Mr. Hernandez. Actually, you can put any Hull player in your team this week in any position, in any department, and they are going to get points for you because I am not convinced that Newcastle are going to do anything. They're not going to pull out of this tailspin this weekend, so I say take advantage of it. You've got someone in the midfield like Stephen Quinn. Now, he's got two assists in four games, so he might be a nice little budget option for you. The problem is... 
he's only played more than 60 minutes in, again, two out of four games. So I'd say dabble maybe on him, dabble again on Diame, he got his goal against West Ham, dabble on him for 5.5, but if your budget is a little bit too tight, Quinn can be that budget option for you. Now before we go any further, I would like to address one thing, and one thing in particular. It's actually in the form of a statement, and that is, fuck Diego Costa's yellow box. For weeks, all we have heard, three weeks I think it's been, is, oh, he's doubtful. Will he play? Will he not? And guess what? He has played and he has scored many goals. All it is, is Mourinho mind games. It's all the tricks. And unless you see Diego Costa wearing a neck brace or a cast or God knows what, then keep him in your team. If he's got a limb amputated, fair enough, you can drop him from your team. Though even then, I would say if it's only his leg, I'm pretty sure if they chopped his arm off, they'd keep him going and he'd probably still score. So stick with Costa. Do not be tempted to get rid of him just because of a yellow box. Unless you see a red box, do nothing. Don't let Jose's mind games fuck you out of points. The Dipsy Dudes Divisional Championship. Another week and another three managers at the top with Rentawag dominating with an 85 point week. Not surprising Costa was captain for this table topper. Just off top spot is Jesse's Giants with a 70 point haul who also featured Costa but actually had Rooney as captain. But a strong performance from the United man meant only minimal losses in comparison. Finally, Bez's bad boys moved up to third in the rankings thanks to, again, that man Costa as captain. I feel like I need a big week. I feel I had a good week last week. I, I mean, I managed to beat the Herbie rule, but last week the Herbie rule did not apply. When you've got people getting 70, 80, 90 point game weeks. The Herbie rule does not come into factor. I mean, yes, you can be on league winning form, but that was a special week. That was a points orgy week. So I hope you managed to get on it. And that's about it for the Fantasy Football Fix this week. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, we will be back next week with more of the same. Remember, if you like what you see, you can hit the old like button or you can subscribe uh, to make sure that you get the latest videos from myself and the other Dipsy Dudes as soon as they are published. You can also follow us on Twitter, the Twitter handle down in the description, and you can find us on Facebook, so search Facebook for Dipsy Dudes. Remember, you've only got one more game week to join the Dipsy Dudes Divisional Championship, and you will find details again down below in the description. Remember, the league is closed to new entrants after game week six. So you've got up until 11.30 next weekend to get in on the league action. But from me, Richard, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you have a very successful fantasy football week because I tell you what, it is game week five, 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 five time, five time, five time, five time, game week. It's game week five. And it's alive. Have a good one.